What's up, man? Woo! Yeah, the stuff that I'm seeing, I man. Know, Are dude. you checking it out? Yeah, man. Well, it took me six and a half hours to park the car. I think oh it's bigger God. than it's ever been before. Over a million square feet, miles and miles yeah, of roads. Man. We've got indoor. You can hear the cars. Yeah, running. man. They're drifting in the background. It's just Bro. awesome. You know, the only thing we don't have is help, man. we got to get somebody. Yeah, we recruited jean Vieve Chappelle because mm. she is going to help us knock this out yeah, of the park. Man. Amen on that. Which way are you headed? I'll go that way. All right, I'm going to head by this future ladder, man. Have a good one, bro. Ready to break? Ooh. You guys hang on. It's going to be a wild ride. Hey, thanks, guys. Yeah, you know, I've been attending SEMA for many years now. But right when I walked in, I noticed that this show is bigger and better than ever before. And we got tons on tap. First off, we're gonna meet the president and CEO of SEMA, Chris Kirsten. We're gonna get his take on the show. We're also gonna meet this year's winner of Launchpad and see how it's gonna change his life forever. Well, stick with us, because we're just getting started. Okay, check this out. Probably the most photographed thing you'll see at SEMA 2014. General Motors Parade of Progress. Now this bus is called a Future Liner. These were designed in 1940 and 41 to tour around the country to show off new technology. It was halted by World War II and then they reassumed touring the country in 1953 through 56. They would have experiments set up right here and pull into a public place and sort of demonstrate all their new technology as well as automotive technology too. But if you look at some of the designs of this bus, this Future Liner, and think it was designed in 1940 and 41, only 11 of them were actually built. There's fewer than five of them left in existence right now. Now one of these sold at Barrett Jackson just a few years ago for four million and rumor has it here at SEMA this one just went for 12 million dollars. It is something spectacular to see GM's Future Liner and their parade of progress right here at SEMA 2014. All right, you can walk through the show, and I mean, it's just eye candy everywhere. This is one that totally catches your eye, brings you in. Jeremy Miranda, How you doing, amazing Kevin? job on a 67 Nova. Tell me a little bit about the, the background of this project, how it got started. It's a great story. Absolutely. This is uh, Steve Taranari's 1967 Nova, and the car was purchased over 30 years ago. We got the car to the shop and we started cutting on it a little bit. We ordered wheels and tires for it right away, and I, I talked him into doing the 2022s that you see on the car. And once we got him into that groove of doing it, it was just, things just started flowing, you know, and it went from just put the car together to what you see here four and a half years later. Did a great day at Detroit Autorama, and then we took the car to uh, Columbus, good guys, where it won Street Machine of the Year, which That's was a, a big, big deal. deal. It was, and then followed up from that, the Reno Barrett Cup top five. You've created something really cool, love it. This is what makes SEMA so special. Thanks for sharing, man. Thank you very much, Kevin. Nice job. Appreciate it. Well, I'm here with Steve Stroh, designer and builder of Pure Vision. Sure. Congratulations on another successful unveiling. Thank another you. SEMA car, another yeah. award. Yeah. I mean, it just never ends. Yeah, we're very fortunate. I have great guys. I have a phenomenal team of people, and that's how cars like this happen, is amazing people around you. I noticed throughout the years, your cars always have a very interesting storyboard, always an interesting theme. What was the theme behind this car? Mm -hmm. So my theory is there's a, an, a, a secret group called Black Ops in the Ford operation that were said, you know what? We got to build a test mule that uh, can be a performance data acquisition vehicle. Okay. So we are not constricted by rules. We can put adjustable suspensions in. We can use the motor that NASCAR won't let us use, but we can get some mileage on that and learn on that for our drag race program. We can experiment with intakes. We can do active aerodynamics and we can have data collected that we can learn from okay. and then put on our race cars that are constricted by rules. So it's actually not too far off to think they may have something that they're using as a test car that they don't have to worry about rules right. and they can learn from. No. I love it. Yeah. I love it. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, the Fuller Hot Rods, double down, four wheel drive, 32 floor. Stick around. This segment is brought to you by CRC Industries, makers of Brake Clean. Dude, I'm so stoked to be back at SEMA this year. I can't wait to get in this joint check I it know. out. Look, my dog right here, what's up? Uh, uh, get down, son. Uh, that's what I'm yeah, talking man, about. Yeah, man, what's up? How's it going, man? 
no, no, no. Come no, on, no, man. No, man. I got no, the. No, no, no. I practice. No, 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 man. No. Do I gotta get like a badge? No, man. You gotta go get your badge. Dang. All right, man, when you look at products at SEMA, man, there's some knockdown stuff you have to use, man. And give it a little street cred, we found Jesse Combs in here talking about the CRC One Tank Power Renew. Come on, it's legit stuff, right? I love this stuff. I mean, it's good for new cars, old cars, any kind of cars. It doesn't really matter because basically all you're doing is cleaning out your entire fuel system so your car runs a heck of a lot better. And we don't mean just a little lot better, we mean a lot, a lot better. A lot, a lot yeah, better. Yeah, man. 97% more efficiency, 100% more fuel recovery, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, but you get 5% increase just alone in gas mileage, miles per gallon, which is what everybody wants right now. If it's recommended by Jesse Combs, I would highly recommend that you use it in your car, right? Another cool thing is, is you only have to use it three or four times a year. Like other additives, yeah. you have to use every time you fill up with your tank. So this also is easier on your wallet as well. There you go, man. Three, four times a year, you're out the door, man. Jesse, thank you so much. Great seeing Good you see as well. Thank there you. you go. CRC One Tank Power Renew. Good stuff as well as Jesse Combs. Great stuff. <laughs>You know, we're always learning something here at the shows. It's a great cutaway engine. It's an example of a GDI or direct injection engine, whether it's turbocharged or naturally aspirated, right? But back in the day, you used to have a PFI injector aimed at the back of the valve. So that fuel was spraying on the valve and the port, keeping everything clean. But with GDI, you know, or direct injection, it's all happening downstream of the port, downstream of the valve. So you pick up those carbon deposits. You start losing fuel economy, you start losing performance. And we all like that power. But Julie Williams here with CRC has a killer product to help us all out. Tell us what you got. Well, we have CRC GDI IVD intake valve cleaner, and this is a patent pending product for us. Um, we developed it just for the problems that you mentioned because on direct injected engines, the back of that intake valve is really hard to clean and you can't clean it with a fuel system additive. And it soaks right on back of the intake valve and removes all those carbon deposits that a fuel system cleaner can't reach on a GDI engine. It's the only product proven to clean intake valves um, without top engine disassembly. Yeah, who wants to tear apart an engine when you can spray some stuff upstream, make it all better? Thanks, Julie. We're going to check out some more stuff here at SEMA. Thanks, Kevin. Oh man, now you guys know how I feel about the second gen Dodge Charger. I love them. And this one's from the Roadster Shop. Man, you talk about one clean, sweet build. The hood is one piece aluminum. It's kind of a Maserati design, keeping that sort of style from the 68, 69, and 70 Dodge Chargers. Under the hood, a Viper V10 with some twins on it. You're looking at about 1,500 horsepower. But let's show you some of the really cool stuff they did just in the slickness of this car. They call it sliced, and I'll show you why. All right, now if you look at this car from a profile, me being a Dodge Charger fanatic, I realized that this had been moved forward. They shortened the nose, because normally it hangs out of here about four or five more inches. So they moved this wheel forward, all right, and then recut this opening here. Actually stretched the wheelbase of this Dodge Charger from 117 inches from the factory to about 121. Pretty slick, man. This is a one-off, unbelievably gorgeous car from the Roadster shop. Love this Dodge Charger, man. Whew. Hi, I'm here at SEMA at the Central Hall with President and CEO Chris Kirstein. I'm so excited to be here today. I mean, SEMA is such a powerful influence in the way it fuels the automotive and motorsports industry. Tremendous, huh? But I want to get your perspective on the history of SEMA. Ah, so a little bit about SEMA. 1963, handful of gearheads got together and they figured they needed an association to do things for them that they couldn't do individually. That's grown from those 25 or 30 guys to more than 6,500 companies. It is the world's best marketplace for automotive innovation, and you can see yeah. this industry here on display. It's incredible. Now let's talk about uh, SEMA Ignited. Yeah, so this year for the first time ever, this is great for all the, the folks out there who are enthusiasts, we're going to have a car show after the SEMA show. Yeah, People cool. finally get to come and see all of the cool vehicles, the cool products that this industry produces. So it's a big new event for us. So the city's gonna love that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Lots and of I traffic, think lots of excitement. Over the years, I think people will come from all over. Yeah. It's really gonna be great. Dude, check this thing out, man. All right, so look at 
not only the layout of this thing, the complication of trying to route all these different systems in a car that was never meant for it, but then the craftsmanship that goes with it, man. Why don't you start walking through and point out, because this is one of the, the coolest cars I think we're going to find at SEMA. Well, if you get around, obviously, get over here. To, this is the business end. And the big challenges were obviously just stuffing all of, of this engine and transfer case, getting the all-wheel drive setup squished within a little 32 Roadster. Yeah, now I could see it, I don't know if you could, but we've got a transfer case sitting in a drive shaft up here. So I can see the drive shaft. Then what do you got? What's driving this guy over here? We actually copied the Denali transfer case okay. and made our own. So all it is, it's, a, it's an oil bath chain. So it's just like a motorcycle primary, very simple system. 1,000 pounds capable. You laid everything out so it performs as well as looks cool. So this is no carpet crawler. 800 plus horsepower driving four monster sized wheels. This thing is gonna be nuts. I can't wait to see you guys go out there and race it and drive it hard. Boom! What's some dirty thing like this doing on the floor of SEMA? Let me put it to you like this. There's just over 2,000 of these made. And when we come back, I'll tell you all about this beauty. This segment is brought to you by Exalta Coating Systems. Simply brilliant. You know, to be a part of Exalta's Automotive Color of the Year launch is uh, something that, that I'm proud of. Um, you know, every weekend at the NASCAR races, I get a chance to drive that number 24 car with Exalta's paint on board, and it's uh, the highest quality paint you can have, so it helps us go a little faster than the competition, as well as uh, the amazing colors that uh, we get to put on our number 24 car every weekend. Man, you can walk through SEMA and get blown away. Now, there's all different styles, whether it's yours or not, you can look at some of the craftsmanship that goes in some of these paint jobs. It's unbelievable. The depth in these candies, how many hours goes into that is incredible. Now, there's a lot to learn about paint, whether you're doing something like this or maybe this number 24 car that you guys might recognize. I got Harry Chrisman here from Exalta. Kevin, Give us a little bit of scoop about some of the paint systems, what we've got here. I know these guys are painting cars almost on a weekly basis. Absolutely. So the, the paint scheme that I really want to focus on today is, is what we see here on the 24 car. This is a new color, Radiant Red, and it's painted with a new base coat, which is Chromax Mosaic. The thing about Chromax Mosaic is it's actually low VOC. So it's a low VOC solvent-borne system. And there are many shops that when we did our, our survey work said, I'm not going water. Uh, yeah. Solvent's what I want. There was a strong preference for solvent among many types of shops. And so we started working on Chromax Mosaic. Well, you got a lot of emissions controls coming around the country, right? Squeezing out the traditional solvent base. And like you said, you're either gonna close your shop or you're gonna go to Waterborne. So you're developing something that suits the needs of a lot of these guys. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. I know shops that say that it blends better than any paint that they've ever used. It's, it blends like a dream. That's awesome. Yeah. Cause you know, it really helps for guys like this that are out there pretty much wrecking their cars every week and having to repaint them. The body shop guys, yeah. the hot rider guys, all of us out there, we all want a good product that we can use. Thanks for the scoop, oh, man. No you guys problem. got it right here. My pleasure. We're gonna keep hauling. Okay, very good. You know, something you're always gonna see at SEMA is old school lines with new technology influenced throughout the car. Now this is Jimmy Johnson's 1971 Stingray. Now right out of the gate, you notice the LT1 hood, something you'll see on the C7 models, along with the side scoop here. So that tells you this car is really something special. Now Chevrolet built this to announce the fact that these new crate motors are gonna be released. Now this is the LT1. It's a direct injection motor and it comes full on complete from the Fiat system to the ECM, even to some bell housing conversion kits that allow you to run the T56 six-speed transmission. You got your LT1 badge in here, 450 horsepower, 450 foot-pounds of torque, six-speed. Great job by Chevrolet making something like this available for all of us. Now we're here at the Ford Racing booth, and man, let me tell you, these guys are bringing it. You know what's hot this year? The brand new 2015 Mustang. First time, independent rear suspension, whole new body, chassis, everything. But you know what, we've seen the base model, now we get to see all the flavors, right? Builders like MRT, Foose, et cetera, getting to take that Mustang and putting their own flavor on it. Now guess what's under the hood of this one? Five liter, five X? No, let me show you. This is 
the brand new 2.3 liter EcoBoost, bringing that EcoBoost lineup out. This thing is putting out rumored over 300 horsepower. Check it out, I love it. Let's go check out some more. Check that out, a double V license plate. Now, if you know anything about California plates, know that that would be a year code 1967. And as you pan out on this dusty old Mustang, you find out some really interesting details. This is a 1967 Shelby GT500, commissioned by Carroll Shelby himself, as you'll see on this tag. Under the hood, this would be a 428 police interceptor. Now understand, this was the biggest, baddest motor that you could get, and that's what Carroll Shelby really wanted. But you see where even with a shaved valve cover to get the master cylinder fit. The woman that bought it in 1967 was a school teacher. She drove it, put 124,000 miles on the car, and in 1981, because of the gas crunch, she said, I need something more economical. Now, 34 years later, it sits on the floor of SEMA. Now, check this thing out. It's an automatic, makes it super rare, one of the few cars from Ford that actually has a factory roll bar in it. Let's face it, we all dream of finding that barn find opening an old crusty garage and seeing something like this sitting in. In its form, right here on the floor of SEMA, this car will bring well over six figures. Amazing piece, amazing time capsule at SEMA. Where else are you gonna see a shoebox battling out with a 70s Camaro right next to a 1600 horsepower all-wheel drive Lamborghini? Only at the Optima Battery Ultimate Streetcar Invitational. To find out more, stick around. This segment is brought to you by Coker Tire, the world's largest supplier of classic and vintage tires. Corky Coker, my man. Hey, All right, good. Hey, I've been around SEMA, seen some awesome stuff. I know you're taking great care of the car. It's all here, isn't it? Yeah, man. All over the place. Now we got to talk about some of your stuff. Sure. Uh, this is the coolest, newest, oh. best product. New product of the year. This is a bias look radial. Right. It is a radial tire made in a bias ply mold. So, so you get you get the look of that, that nostalgic bias ply, the white wall that everybody wants, but the performance of a radial. You got it. Absolutely the look but you get the safety, you get the performance, you get the ride, you get the handling, all of a radial tire. It is an original mold. Okay. It, the tire engineer said it would never be done, but we did it right here at Coca Tire. And we got them in about 15 sizes, all the sizes you need. We even got black walls. What else you got going on, man? I know you guys do all handmade stuff well, on this side. Let's step over here, I'll show you this uh, new Firestone grooved rear for hot rods. It's cooler than dang it. I love it, let's Come see. Come on. If you've got a high boy hot rod of any kind and it's yeah. nostalgic look, you've got to have Firestone Dirt Track rears. <laughs> Back in the day, yeah, right. they didn't have wide tires for, for highway use. Yeah. So everybody used dirt track racing tires. So we have reproduced the original tread design <laughs> in a brand new mold in 1100 and 1200 15s and 16s in the old Firestone that drag is tire. my man. I'm that is you. awesome. 32, right. that's the one. But let me show you my vintage motorcycle tires. Let's you go. won't believe it, they're cool. Come let's on. Let's go. Corky man, you are a riot. I love it, bro. <laughs> I love it. Check this bike Whoa. out. You know, we do. We build all the tires for this. This bike was built by Noise Cycles, and it is just cooler and dang it. It has got the look, etc. But so do we with our vintage motorcycle sizes. We're the world's largest supplier of vintage motorcycle, nostalgic, bobbers, Put cafe racers, like this. all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, man. Put it to you like this. If you need a nostalgic looking tire that's performance based, you got to go with Coker Tires. Man, Corky, I love you, bro. You're awesome. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Now, one of the events that's grown out of SEMA, one of my favorites, is the Optima Battery Ultimate Streetcar Invitational. Now, Jimmy Day is the guy that just runs all this stuff. <laughs> Tell us in your own words, man, it's absolutely one of the most awesome things to come out of the event here at SEMA. Well, we were inspired about eight years ago to put this event together because we get here early and we set up, and we would see all these cars being pushed in by four or five guys down the alley, put in a booth, and then we'd walk around during the SEMA show and these same people would be talking about how great that car is and how well it performs and be like, wait a minute, we saw you push that in. What if we had an event that allowed builders of these cars to put their money where their mouth was? So that was kind of the inspiration behind the whole 
Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitational. And again, the, the parts manufacturers that are building parts for these cars now can, are able to showcase them and bring them out here and people can see that they really do work. Yeah, and they get the feedback because they're out there in competition mode. It really is all about being the ultimate streetcar. And that doesn't matter whether it's an old car, a classic car, a Euro car, an import, or an exotic. Yeah. It's a street car, and we're looking for the ultimate one. All right, the two cars that literally shocked the automotive world, made them stop, drop, and roll. Whether you want 707 horsepower in a two-door format, like the Dodge Challenger Hellcat, or you come over here to the 200 plus mile an hour Dodge Charger Hellcat. They don't get any better. Now we're gonna meet the guy who gave him a thumbs up and greenlit these Hellcat projects, Mr. Pietro Gourlier. How are you, my friend? I'm great, thank yeah. you, I'm great. So tell us what's new with Mopar. A lot of stuff, number one biggest brand out this year, man. Obviously we start with Dodge. Yeah, Hellcat. The Dodge Perf Hellcat. Yeah. Perfect canvas uh, for us. Uh, we have uh, nine functional hoods here. Nine I mean, hoods? Yeah, and they are all uh, functional, it's not ornamental. I mean, they, are, they, they drive better air inside the engine, yeah. etc. There's nothing like it in the world for that price. Fastest muscle car, fastest uh, sedan, four-door yeah. sedan. Whether it's Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, the Mopar brand itself, man. Absolutely. Growing, you guys do a lot of aftermarket support, and you're unveiling something really big oh, here yeah, at SEMA. Yeah. Big, a big <laughs> car. <laughs> Huge. It's a big car of state. This car that is uh, our commitment to NHRA. I mean, NHRA is really where we belong to. SEMA is like Christmas, right? I mean, yeah. we come here and we can uh, really spend time with the enthusiasts and uh, understanding <laughs> what they want. Yeah. People like you. Obviously, everyone's impressed with the styling of the C7. We've seen lots of them at the show, but you know, I just want to take it a step further and really, I want to know what it feels like to be in one and hear it. So I'm here at the GM Ride and Drive, and the cool thing is any attendee that's registered can participate. My, my driver is Victor Resendez, and I'm gonna see what he's up to. Hey, Victor. Hi, John. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be great. What should I expect? Expect uh, the unexpected? Expect the unexpected. We're gonna get going here in just a second. Ah, this is gonna be nothing. We're stuck. this out, the Green Machine, a 1958 Jeep with tracks, that's what I'm talking about. See this thing next at SEMA. This segment is brought to you by Heat Shield Products, making America cooler since 1985. Hey, welcome back to SEMA 2014. We're in the Heat Shield Products booth with my buddy Steve Hay. What I love about this show is it's like a playground. All the cool cars, trucks, this thing is pumping out how much horsepower? 500 horsepower. 500 horsepower, what year? It's 1973. 1973, it's got gun racks. Nice little ARs. Now we all know 500 horsepower, that's a lot of heat. A lot so of heat. These guys here are coming to the rescue and saving us from melted wires, shoes, right? Keeping our loved Blisters. ones safe. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Our newest and latest and greatest product is our header armor. It's a 1800 degrees. It's a sheet, you can custom trim and fit it. it comes with ink and nail wire to attach it to the headers. Really cool thing about this is since it's not completely wrapping the header pipe, it should be warranty compliant for header manufacturers and it really knocks the heat down up to like 40%. Well, it's nice because it's easy to do. Right. It wraps in minutes, but it keeps everything cool. I love it. Now you guys got all kinds of stuff. I see a flamethrower over there. Let's go play Let's go fire. check it out. All right. This is our Stealth Shield. Uh, it's really thin. Uh, the really cool thing about that is you can knock heat down inside your car. It's the first product that's really engineered to knock heat down from within. Super thin, won't cause any carpet fit, fitment issues when you're putting it in your car. You put it up above your headliner, so finally something to put up above yeah. to stop that heat from beating down in on you. See, it's all about layering, right? So you exactly. got the heat source, you knock it down with some of the shielding there, a little bit of insulation here. Exactly. Next thing you know, you're cool as a cucumber. Cool as a cucumber. Well, let's get rid of let's that cool as a shot. cucumber and put the fire on. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, there it is. Right on. So now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put my hand on this side. 
You're gonna put your hand on that side. Put my hand on that side. All right, now kids at home, if you think this is a rig job here, we're looking at 900. Uh, yeah, that's pretty hot, but let me see. Still no there. blisters. Still there. Still there. Nice job. All right, shut that again. guy off. Yeah. yeah. The last thing you want to do on a hot rod run or be out on the trail is have a meltdown, throw a fire out there. So thanks, man, for hey, bringing the killer it. stuff. Thanks for stopping by, Kevin. We're, We're going to keep roaming it. around and show you more of SEMA 2014. I'm here with Peter McGillivray, VP of Events and Communications for SEMA, and we're in the new product showcase area. This is fantastic. I personally have never seen this many new products housed under one roof, we're getting massive exposure. How many products are actually on exhibit here? This year, there are over 2,000 products on wow. display. Wow, wow. And luckily, there's millions of consumers out there that are hungry for these new products. That's and so, true. it's one big cycle, and uh, we're, we're, we're really, really happy to be at the, the beginning of that cycle. So beyond the new product showcase, what was exciting for you this year at SEMA? I love seeing legacy companies, companies that have been with us since the very first show in 1967. Wow. But I also like new companies, companies that have just started up in somebody's garage. Yeah. I love seeing them come and be successful here at the SEMA show. Getting the exposure here helps their business. Winning an award helps them that much more. You know, sometimes the question at SEMA isn't why would you, it's why wouldn't you? It's a 1958 Jeep FC 170. And look at this thing, it's on tracks. So it doesn't matter how much snow or what 5 p.m. traffic is like, you're gonna get where you need to go, man, especially in a beast like this. All new 5.7 Hemi under the hood, new suspension, new drivetrain, and yes, it is street legal. SEMA's YEN hosts an annual competition called Launchpad where entrepreneurs under 40 are invited to showcase and present their new products, services, or businesses to a panel of five judges who are SEMA experts. We're about to find out the final winner and the kind of prize they just took home. Well, I'm alongside the winner of Launchpad. This is so exciting. Yeah, I yeah. I thought you were gonna pass out up there. Uh, almost, I probably, probably would have. Okay, so first, tell us about the product. Um, Boostane is an octane concentrate. We can, uh, we can effectively transform 93 pump fuel mm -hmm. to as high as a 110 race fuel equivalent and, and anywhere in between that. So give um, our viewers, people who are thinking about applying for the competition next year, um, some words of wisdom. If, if you believe in your product, which being, if you're at the SEMA show or even watching this, you know, you're an enthusiast, just go out and do it. I mean, next thing, next thing you know, you'll be standing in my shoes. What can you make out of a 1917 fire truck? When we come back, we'll go over this one bumper to bumper. Trust me, you're gonna wanna see this. This segment is brought to you by Hunter Engineering Company. Now, SEMA's not all just about bling, it's not about building cars, it's about repairing the technology, you know, putting that into making the jobs of fixing the cars that we drive every day a lot easier. Now, we always stop by Hunter, because they've got the best stuff coming out every year. John Zantz, Hunter Engineering, tell us what's new this year. Thanks, Kevin, it's great to be here with you guys again. We're really excited to, to introduce this year our Quick Tread Drive Over Tread Depth Measurement System. Neat thing about this is, is when the customer drives into a service facility, just drives over the tread depth machine, it instantly measures the tread depth of all four corners of the car. You can just see right there, we had the pictures up on the screen of those individual tread depth measurements and we can present that to the customer and show them the information about so their tires. So there are tires. feelers and things that poke up in there to measure that tread depth? How does that work? No, there's actually a, a set of lasers and cameras, and when you drive over to Triggers, it takes a picture of the tread, creates a 3D image of that actual tire, so we talk to the customer about their tires on their car. And also, while it was in this lane, we did a quick alignment check as well. So in 60 seconds, we can give this to the consumer and let them know exactly what's going on with That's their vehicle. That's amazing. They get their own car picture on there, their VIN number, so everything is custom tailored to them. That's exactly right. So you think about this when a customer comes into a repair facility, it's a great experience for them to learn information about their car in a very nice graphical format and talk to them specifically about the issues with their vehicle. That's pretty impressive. Now, can we go see how this thing works real quick? Oh, of course. We'd love to. All right, let's go. Cool. So this is the same setup you have over there, but this one's messy. 
What's going on over here? Well, Kevin, here's an example where we're demonstrating the capabilities of our quick tread in uh, rainy conditions, you know, wet tire conditions, and still be able to get accurate readings every single time. All right, that makes a lot of sense. So as the tire comes across, I see some trips and some noises. What's going on in there? Well, this is just a switching system. When the tire rolls, when the vehicle rolls across the sensor, the switches basically activates this. It shoots a laser onto the tire, takes a picture of the tread, and generates that 3D image. Everything's dialed in. You guys are always pushing the limits. That's that's why we stopped by Hunter Engineering. Thank you, John. John. Appreciate thanks for it, sharing. Buddy. Always great being with you guys. Thank you. All right, you know at SEMA, you just get bathed in muscle cars, the new technology. But seeing something like this, this exquisite, you got to really focus in and see this. This is my man, Gary. He built this. It's called the La Bistione. La Bistione, the beast. All right, now explain what this actually is. Okay, well, first of all, if you were at a SEMA show 100 years ago, this would have been high tech. <laughs> this is basically a simplex engine, which was the best of the time. How many cubic inches is it? 900 cubic inches, 14 liters. Now take yeah. a look at just the size of this piston. <laughs> if you can imagine, I mean, this thing is Goliath. Look at the size of this thing, churn it up and down. Not just that, but look at this rod. I mean, that thing is enormous. This yeah. was made in Elmira, New York, uh, almost 100 years ago. It'll do 100 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's really a gas to drive. As you can see, it's because it's a larger than life type of a thing. It is, know? man. La Bestione, it's a beautiful piece at SEMA. Rad Rides by Troy bringing the Streamliner here from Bonneville, Salt Flats Racer. Now what's awesome about this, it's a killer race car machine, but they bring their same craftsmanship and attention to detail. Now look at the body, this is all hand-formed aluminum, but this panels come on and off continually, so there's no room for body filler because it's just gonna crack off, so everything you see here is just sealer and paint. Now come up here to the cockpit. Again, check out the welds going on through the entire cage. This is full chromoly. Now let's go down to the business end. Now this guy right here is a 930 horsepower naturally aspirated V8. Now the whole goal of this machine is to top 400 in an NA V8. 15 to 1, 10,000 RPM race gas, pretty awesome. Now this Liberty 7 speed pneumatic shifted gearbox, making everything happen to the rear. Quick change on the back, look at every single weld, the fabrication, it's from front to back, it's insane. Another awesome ride from Rad Rides. As you can see, the house is packed. SEMA 2014 is brimming over the top. So stick around, we got a whole lot more to show you. This segment is brought to you by Linex. Nobody knows trucks better than Linex. You know, I love coming to SEMA because you get a little glimpse, a little window, if you will, into what's gonna happen out there in the general public, the population three, four years down the road. Take Linex, for example. It all started with this bed liner. I mean, let's think, it's the number one bed liner in the entire truck industry. There's nothing tougher. But now they've really expanded to be your one-stop truck shop. Things like integrated bumpers, right? Now this is truck gear from Linux. And look, it kind of looks OE. So when they do your bed liner, they got the bumper, so it looks kind of like factory, all right? They got all kinds of cool stuff. Let's talk to Kevin, the man with Linux, and see what's next. Okay, I'm here with Kevin from Linux, and I have the old handy Leatherman. You would never do this to the paint on your car, would you? No, not unless it had this body armor on it. And you guys have really done an amazing job. What you guys have done to vehicles, you see out in the general public three years down the road. So this is just now catching on, but you guys have gone well past that. We did, of course, we took a lot of the technology we had in the back of a truck, yeah. where there's a lot of abuse, and we brought it to the whole truck. With our body armor, with our aliphatic coatings, we can do your truck custom, and it's protected. Yeah, man, it makes total sense. It does. Now Line X is doing a lot of a lot of new stuff. You guys are really becoming like a one-stop truck shop. We really have. With our truck gear by Line X, we're really bringing all the accessories into one store. So a customer can come in and fully get, get his truck fully accessorized by our franchise. You know, I don't care what kind of truck you have. One of the big goals about owning a truck is making it look tough, making it look aggressive, making it look like, well, this. What we do here is we've got our truck gear by Linex front bumper that we've again sprayed with our platinum product and we've taken a standard piece, the grill guard, yeah. and toughened a plastic piece up, durable, long lasting. Oh. Not only is it protection, right, but it looks 
it just looks tough. It just looks cool. Absolutely. So it's a, a one-stop shop. Yeah, man. And, and there's a lot of them all over the country. There right? is. There's over 450 across North America exclusively for the truck gear by Linex and the Linex uh, products. And come in and they can get their truck done just like this. Over a thousand horsepower in a turnkey race car, that is fabulous. I'm here with my friend Bruno Massel. Congratulations on your win this year. Yeah, it was a big year for us. Um, 2014, um, we got the first win for the Copa Camaros. It took three years. We had the car for four months and we got the job done in our biggest race of the year, which is the 60th annual Chevrolet Performance U.S. National. So timing is everything. Yeah, timing is everything. Okay, I understand there's only 69 of these cars that were built, right? Yes, this was number six for 14. They've done 69 in 12, 13, 14, and just announced that they're gonna do 69 more in 15. Nice. But this is the first one with the supercharger, the one making the real power. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool and you buy it turnkey from the factory this way, which is yeah. really awesome. What's your favorite thing about the car? That's fast. <laughs> yeah, I figured <laughs> you And you know what, the way that. it sounds. The way it sounds? You need to fire it up. Really? Yes, yes, Am trust me. Am I allowed me. to? I'll let you. Okay. Just don't tell anybody, okay? Okay, okay, let's do it. Now it's one thing to walk around Seaman, see some great cars, some great trucks. It's another thing to actually take one home. We had an opportunity to stop by the Federated booth over at Apex and watch Doug Duggars choose between a brand new Colorado or a classic 49 Chevy pickup. And what did he choose? I think it's a, it's a no-brainer. 49. Yeah, man, yeah. Toyota Camry, not your normal Camry. You wanna see under the hood? Oh no, you're not ready yet, you're not ready. When we come back, I'll show you. This segment is brought to you by Automotive Racing Products, the world's leader in fastener technology. Check this out, a killer 69 Camaro from Detroit Speed. Miles of details, look at the custom hood underneath. We've got the killer LS power plant, the supercharger. I've got Chris here from ARP walking us through a little bit of the build and some of the cool products that you guys have for all of us to build these pitching rides. It's got a full array of ARP fasteners, our high strength stainless, all over the engine, all over. There's a lot of details around the car that they've included ARP parts, and these are all catalog off the shelf parts. Now, what's cool is, you know, we think about the critical fasteners, right? The head bolts, studs, mains, etc. But with ARP, you can put that same quality, high quality fasteners everywhere, but you can also pop the style. But we have the lug nuts, we have the brake cap bolts. Even, even the drain plug is a high strength 12 point stainless ARP bolt. You know, we, we, we got all the fasteners on that car over there, but this is, this is a more the upper level high performance engine here. It, it's a uh, Sprint Cup engine from ECR Engines, and it has a full array of off the shelf hardware as, lot, as well as a lot of custom made hardware. Blowers, one of the favorite things for old school hot rods, 671s, et cetera. But you know, I've always seen them with some cruddy looking fasteners on there. Yeah, when this kit, when, when they sell these kits, all the different blower manufacturers, they sell the blower kit, it's always got a nice shine, it's really well polished, but then they come with a standard commercial grade hardware. Uh, the Allen bolts will rust or a hex bolt will just get a little corroded, not look as nice. We make kits now that you can replace your, your blower drives, your bearing housing bolts with high strength, very highly polished stainless. Well, I like how you even have the small details in the carburetors. Yeah, this Carter AFB carburetor's been out for years. It came stock on many, many cars, and then Edelbrock's repopped the thing, and, and they've done a real good job with it, and they, they do a lot of black carburetors. We have our high-strength stainless 12-point fasteners for the bowl kit, as well as you can get an air cleaner stud or some carburetor stud kits. This is done right. Throw away your old bolts. Grab the upgrade. You'll never have to deal with it again. Awesome stuff at ARP. We're going to keep hitting the trails. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for coming in. Follow along, guys. Okay, I'm at the Toyota booth. All kinds of great Toyotas all around. The spotlight is on a Camry? I mean, it's, it's just a Camry. Or is it? Underneath the hood, a 5.7 supercharged Toyota motor out of a Tundra. The rear end is a Tundra. My friends, this is the baddest sleeper at SEMA. Over a thousand horsepower at the rear tires. Whoo! 
I'm with the president of Hot Riders of Tomorrow, Rodney Bingham, and as you can see, there's lots of action taking place behind us. Mm -hmm. So the Hot Riders of Tomorrow Engine Challenge offers tremendous benefits to the participants. Absolutely. Let's talk about the scholarship money. Uh, this year at the finals, they have offered $3 million in scholarship opportunity to all the competitors. Most of them don't realize how big the, 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 the SEMA industry is. Um, and, and partner with SEMA and, and PRI, they get exposed to, it's just not Chevy, Ford, and Dodge. Right. There's a whole thriving in industry of the, of the aftermarket. Have you seen an increase in female mechanics over the years? Oh, absolutely. We, this year, for example, we have our first all-girls team uh, out, out of Georgia, Team Royal Purple. And then just about every other team has a girl or two on, on the team. So that, that glass ceiling, if you will, has, wow. has, has been busted. Awesome. And, and, and the girls are just as involved as the guys. And we fact, love that. A, a lot of times, they're actually better than some of the guys. So. Yes, I love hearing that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, nice chatting yep, you. Very nice to meet you. Good work. Thank you so much. All right, we found a beast at the GoPro booth. Now check out this from the Roadster shop. The only things that are not carbon fiber on this thing are the roof and the door skids. We're talking carbon fiber hood, fenders underneath this big beast, and LS7, 750 horsepower. Now you talk about a blurred line between race car and show car, you're looking at it. Performance, yet fit and finish trimmed out. When you see a front end like this, it just screams aggressive. It started out as a 1970 Camaro, but now it is a beast within. One bad machine right here at SEMA. Yeah, man, if you're not just about walking around and looking at stuff, you want to get interactive, this is the place to be. We can weld, we can cut with torches, we can plasma cut. This is the funnest carnival in town. I think I'm just gonna hang out here for a while and fabricate some stuff. All right, some of the top builders year after year at SEMA and any other car show you go to, the Ring Brothers. I got Mike here, brand new build. Tell me a little bit about this one. Uh, we were lucky enough to have an owner that just wrote a check and said, here's some basic ideas of making it just clean, simple road race. Hadn't seen the car till yesterday. The materials are amazing because you got everything from carbon fiber, right, all the hand-formed aluminum panels. I see you got sort of a wet transfer on the pattern here, so really cool choice of, you know, textures, colors, and everything like that. And even the headliner is a full Class A surface, carbon fiber, really cool mixture of, you know, how you guys fabricate, the skills, the sweat, really cool visuals everywhere you look. Dude, you guys blew it out of the park again. I appreciate it, Kev. So go home and get some sleep, my yeah, friend. Yeah, no, it's good, thank you. We'll see you next year. All right. All right, when you talk king of the street nowadays, you gotta throw the name GTR in the mix. Nissan makes one bad beast of a car. It's all wheel drive. The Achilles heel of this car, however, is the weight issue. But check out this one. It's a 2012 and every single panel, I mean everything on this car is carbon fiber. Over 440 pounds saved just on the exterior of this car in weight alone. Now you know that 100 pounds equals a tenth of a second, a quarter of a mile, and that equates this car to even a badder beast out on the road. And if you know anything about GTRs, you gotta give them credit in the motor department. They build some bad motors to go. So here you go, a full-on carbon fiber GTR, first one I've ever seen. We've shown you as much as possible from inside the SEMA show, but it's not over yet. Kevin and Willie are gonna parade down the strip to the largest car show in Las Vegas, SEMA Ignited. Hey you guys, it's been so much fun. I've had a great time with you. I'm Jean Bief Chappelle and I'm signing out from SEMA 2014. That's what I'm talking about right here. We are unleashed. You can smell SEMA. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're saying goodbye to SEMA inside. We're rolling outside on the strip in Las Vegas. This is SEMA Ignited. This is where all of us industry guys have been clamoring on this stuff all week. Yeah, man. We get to share it with the people of Las Vegas. Too cool, man. We're in an old school hot rod. They're surrounded every corner, every street side. Look at the people lined up the street. This is what it's all about. It's 
cool that the industry people get to see it inside the show, where you take it to the public, where they can appreciate it. Love it.